to access kingdom economy and i will show you what kingdom economy is as we progress now but there are two basic things that make it possible for you to be able to enjoy the economy of the kingdom either to be able to ascend into the heavens or to be able to bring the dwelling place of god to you because those two possibilities exist it is possible to go to god and the possibility to bring god to you also exists for us to be able to do that there are two basic things and those things are trapped in a word that jesus uses when he speaks to this woman when he speaks to this woman so if you have not learned as a kingdom man kingdom woman to be able to engage in these keys in these lifestyles you will find out that the economy is open to everyone but you have not begun to reap the fullness of those possibilities for instance in kingdom economy divine health is a possibility you know that thing called mercy mercy is part of kingdom economy is a manifestation of the dynamics of the kingdom mercy the mercy of god you know the bible says that elizabeth was barren her womb was shut up and she could not have children but when they wanted to describe her testimony the scriptures say that her neighbors her families her family members everyone her friends they heard that the lord had done what shown her great mercy great mercy so the possibility of elizabeth's birth or her possibility of her to give birth was encapsulated in the fact that she was able to access a kingdom economy so every kingdom has its economy every kingdom has its policies every kingdom has its rules has its laws has the possibilities that exist so the kingdom to which you belong is the one that determines what you are have right to access but how can you belong to the kingdom of god and yet there are many things that are available to you you are not able to touch it jesus said to the to the woman after he had told her many things in verse 19 she now says to him sir i perceive that you are a prophet verse 20 our fathers worshipped on this mountain that means where and jesus were having this conversation the mountain in question was in view so she was able to say this mountain if you are a student of the bible you will know that she was speaking about the mountain of the samaritans where they had their sacred temple for worship that mountain was called mount gerishim mount gerishim so she was saying that our fathers worshiped on this mountain but you jews say that in jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship so the matter of discourse here was what worship and this woman was approaching the discourse of worship based on where worship occurs so should we worship on mount gerishim or should we worship on mount zion because if you are a student of the bible you will know that when the bible speaks about mount zion most of the time it's referring to where jerusalem so do we worship on mount gerishim or do we worship on mount zion the matter of discourse here is worship worship in this sense is not the singing of a song worship is the outflow of a life how your life gives god honor reverential honor that's what worship is worship is reverential honor that is born out of deep love what did i say worship is born out of what deep love that's what worship is and you can engage in worship by various methods and those keys are the ways we are able to access kingdom economy you access kingdom economy by giving reverent honor to the king but you see that reverent honor is not born out of need because what we see done in most christian circles is our worship 
our willingness to give God our life, our willingness to subscribe to Christian disciplines and Christian culture is born out of our need for something. So the average believer is attending church regularly because he wants God to give him money. The average believer is honoring God, in quote, with his tithe and offering. At the back of his mind, it is a bribe. He's just, he just wants to bribe God so that if problem come and his pastor asks him, do you pay or are they pay? So God, they owe me money. If I am paying my tithe, then God is my debtor. God is obligated. That is the mentality of the, of the average believer. Because I obey his command to give tithe, then God is now obligated to do something for me. So that is not reverent honor born out of deep love. That is honor. That is something masquerading as honor, but it is born out of need. There's something you want from God, and you are thinking that you can bribe him by trying to do certain things that he commands us to do. But that's not what worship is. Worship is that God has become so magnified in your eyes that everything else no longer matters and all you ever want is all of God. All of God. On the basis of that longing and desire and your prioritizing who he is, then you begin to honor him with your life. In worship is prayer. Prayer is part of the protocols of worship. Because you cannot activate the protocols of worship itself without communication, without communion, without intimacy. So prayer is one of the keys that unlock the possibilities that worship can unlock in kingdom economy. Do you remember that woman whose daughter was vexed with a demon? Did you read that scripture? That her daughter was vexed with a demon. The Bible says when she came to Jesus, she fell down and worshipped him saying, have mercy on me. She was asking for something that existed in a realm that only kingdom men can access. And she understood that to access kingdom economy, there is a key, is proskunio, is worship. That's the Greek word, proskunio. It means to bow down. And it's not what I was doing just now. Because even the Yoruba people tell us that a child can be kneeling down or lying down and say, Eka lesa, but he, he's standing in his mind. His physical posture is such that he's lying down and saying, But in his heart, he's actually standing. So he's seen this clown. It is here they lie down for him. He's standing. So when we speak of proskunio, we're not talking about just the physical posture of lying down. Proskunio is the physical posture of where your life is under government. You have bowed to your king. You have bent to your king. That is what Paul tries to describe in Romans chapter 12 when he says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present. Bro, bless him, come lie on the altar that you present your bodies a living sacrifice once that body is on the altar the body is no longer yours in kingdom economy once you have put it on the altar it belongs to God that is why once the priest had received the sacrifices it now becomes the Lord's own so whatever God wants to do with that body, God can come to that body and say, I know you have graduated and you have a, 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 a first class, but this body, I want to use it as a missionary. God can come to that body and say, this body, I know it is your right to marry. I ordained marriage. But for this body, marriage is not in your civilization. But you find that many people have proscuneled in quote, but when the heat of the altar becomes intense, blessing ghetto. When nobody is watching, they run off the altar. 
and when they've run off the altar they are thinking thinking that from where they are they can be bribing god with certain religious activity so he's no longer proskuneo he's no longer in the state of worship and he's thinking that if he does certain things kingdom economy will open to him i can bet you that for you to tarry with god for six hours and raise the dead is a level of authority that god does not give to every man for you to wield authority your life must be under authority and the way we bring our lives under authority the the new testament word for it is called worship worship see that man go worship so prayer becomes one of the ways by which you are able to bring worship to god you commune with him prayer shows your your great insufficiency you begin to speak to the lord on the basis of the fact that you recognize that you don't have capacity within yourself to bring to pass the things that you desire prayer the other dimension of worship is sounds songs songs singing in itself is not worship but we can use songs to worship we can use songs to worship and songs that are powerful in the fireplace of worship are songs that are drawn out of your experiential knowledge of god so you are not singing a song that a, a, a composer wrote that is sweet you are singing a song that is a product of your experiential knowledge of god where i was teaching on friday night i was beginning to tell them that you see in christianity there is what is called theological knowledge of your logical reality there's also what is called positional reality but the third level of that thing is what is called experiential reality so for instance in theology one of my favorite examples in theology the bible says in john chapter one that as many as believe him to them he gave what to become what the sons of god that's theologically correct what theology is telling us is that the day you decide to receive jesus remember that to receive him you must first believe him so in the day you believe and then you receive him theologically he says that if you call yourself the son of god you are correct positionally it also means that you in your position you have become the son of god but Paul now begins to tell us in Romans that it is as many that are led by the Spirit of God that are. So it means that you can be theologically correct, positionally aware, and yet experientially in error. So even if you've believed and you have received and every day you wake up in the morning and say, I'm the son of God. Oh, Satan, I'm the son of God. Satan will be looking at you saying you don't have access to that kingdom economy. Because yes, it's part of the economy that when you get born again, you will be the son of God. The Bible says that he made him first among many brethren. The whole reason that he came was that he might bring many sons to a place called glory. But Paul says Satan can shut you out of the possibilities that exist in the kingdom if he finds that when he comes, he doesn't find you under government. Paul is saying that it's not enough to say by positive confession that I'm the son of God. The proof, the way the spirit realm recognizes that indeed you are the son of God is that you are led by the spirit of God. And you see our generation is a generation that does not want to be led. We want to lead ourselves. When I was preaching yesterday evening, I told them that two of God's obsessions our obedience and loyalty let me show you that scripture that i use there um exodus 19 verse 5 
obedience and loyalty. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and do what? Keep my covenant. Then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people for all the earth is man. Jesus was giving this promise to his chosen people, Israel. How many of us have read Deuteronomy 28 before? Good. If you've never read it, go and read it. The first 14 verses in that scripture talk about blessings. But from 15 to 64, talks about crosses. And the way it begins, it says, if you will obey me, 